listening to WSCA 106.1 FM. It is 12 o'clock on Monday, which means it's time for Seacoast Business Connections Radio Show. I'm your host, Mark Miller. I'm here with my co-host team of Eric and TJ, the boys from Pixel Media. We definitely want to get into getting get Neil looped in here because I think he's going to bring some very good storytelling because <laughs> I hear about it on occasion. Uh, I, I go to that diner a fair amount. Um, I, I love diners. We just we were just saying the kids and I just went this weekend. It's our fa- that's the one place we look for if we're going to go for breakfast. Mm-hmm. We don't go to chains or anything yeah. like that. Well, come on down, you know, Fast Eddie's Diner was you know a family friendly fifty style diner, but it's a little bit more than just diner food. You know, my background has always been fine dining before I decided to you know jump in with both feet and buy a, a diner. So I tried to bring that you know a little bit of flair to you know a traditional diner atmosphere where, you know, it is a diner, but Everything behind the scenes that we do at Fast Eddie's is the same as you'd get in a fine dining restaurant. We still make veal stock and chicken stock every week, and we make our pomodoro sauce or tomato sauce from scratch. All of our salad dressings are from scratch. Everything is from scratch the same way you'd get in a fine dining restaurant. Should I call Guy Fieri? And see if he can come up here and get you some I coverage. Can't touch me. Well, well, yeah. TJ is definitely a preparer of food. I've watched him do it, so he probably can get some get some tips and 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 can appreciate the work you put in. And I've seen it. I've I'm seen a slow it. food dad. I cook yeah. everything for the kids, so um, yeah. yeah, it's a big deal. So, 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 so where did you start? This yeah, journey, exactly. That's like of, of yeah. getting into. Food. All right. Well, you know, like you know, when you ask a little kid, you know, what do you want to do when you grow up? My answer was always, I want to be a chef, and I think a lot of that came from. You know, my mom worked at Friendly's when I was a little kid, and my dad would take us to see my mom, and, you know, I'd see her behind the scenes on the grill and scooping the ice cream, and I just always, you know, that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. So, you know, from a very early on, early age, I just, you know, I went on that course, and, um, you know, through high school, I also worked at Friendly's, and I my first restaurant was, um, besides Friendly's, was a place called Antonetta's in Everett, Mass., and that's where, you know, I kind of learned... You know, the saute skills and stuff like that, really fast, really good. And then, you know, on to college from there. And I worked, you know, I never stayed a weekend at school at Johnston and Wales in Providence. I worked, came home every single weekend really? to work. How, you know? how difficult is it to work under somebody in cooking where they really ultimately want you to do it their way and you have kind right. of your own style and flair about it? It's extremely difficult. But if you can do it, it makes you so much better on the, the, on the back end of that because... Now, if you're treated properly, if you're, you're treated, if you're treated well during, during that process, you know, you can kind of like take that and bring that to the guy that y'all going to put under you. And on the backside of that, if you're not treated well, then you know, like what worked and what didn't work for you personally. <laughs> and like, you, you know, you can kind of change that a little bit, you know, it's part of your, it's part of your education. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's part absolutely. of building you up to what you're going to You know, I look at become. my time as a sous chef and, you know, if the chef walked in here right now, I'd, I wouldn't say hi to him. But, I mean, I have some respect because, you know, he, he taught me some certain things, but I, I don't like the guy. You know, the cream of the crop don't go to diners and apply for jobs. Mm. They go to the Wentworth by the Sea Country Clubs, and they go to the higher-end places. But I think once they get into Fast Eddie's, they, re- they realize this guy knows what he's talking about. Let me just, you know, shut my mouth for a little bit, listen to what he has to say. And I think as they spend more time at Fast Eddie's working with me, they understand I'm getting a better education than I would at at any other fine dining restaurant. There's a debate to be had there, right, which is that going to places like the Wentworth and the Hundy and things like that and being a traditional Sioux, you're not going to get, you know, you're not going to get the type of sort of homey, hands-on mentoring. You're just, you're a cog in a machine in those places. I try to treat people, you know, with a lot of respect and... And sometimes that's hard because you don't always have like the best learners under you either. You need to have a good learner in order to be a good teacher. Um, so, you know, you just do the best you can um, with trying to get to c- communicate and to get through and to break through. And I think one of the most rewarding things is when you, you can almost like see it when you break through and they, they start to get it. And they can start to put that to task on the table or on the stove. And they say, like, okay, they get mm-hmm. it. They are getting it. This Which is must good. have its own reward. The, I, that is you, the best right? reward. Yeah. That is the best reward when they, when they finally get it. Well, I think the important thing to realize is that when you go to a restaurant, you look around and there's a bunch of full tables. There is an army of people sweating their butts <laughs> off out back. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> giving it everything they have to give you a meal and the people around you a meal. And that is hard. Yeah, yeah. It's hard when it's, and on it's a hot, hot yeah. day. My kitchen is 140 degrees if it's 90 degrees outside. Wow, seriously? Seriously, no, no. exaggeration there. That reminds I mean, me of my roofing hot. days. You're sitting out in the dining room in, a, in any restaurant. Somebody is sweating their tail off to serve you. I promise you that. Yeah, you try yeah. that before you buy a restaurant. And I'm sure certain 
percentage of people don't appreciate that. Right. right. At all. Well, well I would actually, think they don't know it either. They don't yeah, know what's they don't going on behind it. the scenes. Well, one of the yeah, don't funny. you you bake too though, right? And that's even that's even like a little different, right? Yeah, I, mean, I do some baking at the diner. Yeah. I do you consider so. that a totally different skill than than it's regular? It's a totally different skill. Baking. But yeah. I'm good at everything, so it's you know. Baking is you difficult. do need him at yeah. Pixel Media to help out around there. He's good at everything. You just said what it. do you what do you do for yeah. baking? Baking's baking's like legit. You, yeah. That's a precision art right so there. So we do all like the cakes from scratch at Fast Eddie's, all wow. the pies. No and, kidding. Uh, as Eric alluded to earlier, I taught myself how to make donuts at the diner, and I go in super early on Sunday mornings and I make donuts every Sunday and. Uh, yeah. I think they're pretty awesome. I, I nice. just love that you just take on more. It's like, you know, you already got this, like you said, this big menu. You get breakfast. It starts at, you know, whatever early time in the morning. It's like, all right, now I'm just going to make donuts as well in the morning before yeah. all that. I'm well, like, the thing oh, was, like, you man, know, like, the donuts, I just wanted to teach myself how to make donuts. I really never had any intention on doing it every Sunday. I just wanted to learn it and, like, be good at it so I could say, like, I make a good donut. And you hadn't made them since you were seven. Exactly. <laughs> you know? And I can tell you that I failed, you know, a couple dozen times before I finally figured it out. And um, I mean, like, fail, like, throw them in the trash. These are horrible donuts. Mm. Um, but when I finally figured it out, and, you know, I do it on Sunday mornings, and now it just kind of, like, picked up where people have walked out of the diner if I didn't make donuts. Like, well, okay, well, where are you going to go and get a fresh donut right now? Oh. Let's just sit down and have breakfast. So now, you know? all right, so now now you're sort of... So now I'm kind of like, you know, I've turned Sunday into a, from a short day to a pretty long day. Yeah, oh, mm. that's what I mean. You're always just layering something else on. Right. So it's all good, though. Um, we got to wrap it up, guys. Yeah, we're going to head down. Really great conversation. Yeah, Neil, this was fun. No, it was I, a great story. And like I said, I do it. He's been to my house and watched me cook. And he's like, because I, I keep my kitchens very neat at home. Right. My office is not. And he was mystified. 